This is a FACO in a very hard cataract, it's almost a grade 4 to grade 5 nucleus sclerosis. Uh, so after the making the incisions, I stain the capsule with tripan blue, expel both the tripan blue and the air with 2% HPMC. The, I can already see that the pupil is not too well dilated. These are not good cases. And instinctively, I already know that this pupil is going to shut down on me. Anyway, it's dilated enough to make a large enough rexus with my cystitome. And in these hard cataracts, everything has to go according to clockwork. I mean, you just cannot, you know, have a small, because any step that goes wrong really sets up a cascade of effects that you wouldn't like to be faced with. So here's first, already pupil shutting down and I'm not getting the plane to hydrodise it. Eject it, no, it's not. Be very careful with your hydrodissection, don't have a misdirection. There I can see the nucleus is lifting up, so it has hydrodissected. But these cases usually have a lot of capsulocortical additions. Or they are so compact, sometimes even with good hydrodissection, it is difficult to rotate the nucleus. So sometimes you may have to use a little mechanical leverage. So I'm just very gently rotating it to break whatever additions are there. And now slowly it's rotating freely. This step has to be done extremely carefully. You can have zonulodialysis, but I think it's okay keep watching the space between the pupil and the anterior lens capsule. I have taken a very sharp long chopper. I am going with 80% FACO power, 400 millimeters of vacuum and 40 ml flow rate. So I am going to do direct chop. You can already see almost like a reverse pupillary block happening. But no go. I have to start doing the chops and there are no hard, hard end measures. Here. So here's my first chop. I haven't impaled completely but impaled enough. And I'm tearing it. You can see it's like a leathery cataract. This is a diabetic patient obviously. These are the people who have these hard leathery cataracts. And I already have planned. I have to make a minimum of six fragments if not eight. And keep breaking and trying to see the posterior capsule as you separate the pieces. So I am trying to do it in one go. If I keep coming out now and refilling HPMC or whatever, the pupil is going to shut down further and further. So try to limit your going in and out of the AC. So as long as you can manage, since these are direct vertical shops that you do in the center, you have enough space. So still going to make more and more fragments. Just rotating, chopping, rotating, chopping. It looks boring, but it is really, really high tense. It's really quite a stressful maneuver because you know you can land up with all your efforts, you can still land up with a posterior plate. And you can already see that central plate there. However, I think there are some fragments we can, which I can get hold of. Trying to break that spine. And now it's time to come out. I don't need my sharp chopper anymore. Just putting in some chondritin sulphate and 
going to go in with my dialer. You can see my wound is slightly hydrated and this can happen. This is because the pupil is shut down so automatically you tend to pull your phaco handpiece backwards. You don't want to catch that pupillary margin. So your infusion gets into the incision. I am watching that carefully but I think it's okay I can handle this. It's trying to take out as many fragments. So far so good. I can see there is one of the heminuclei is still attached. I am trying to keep my phaco tip bevel facing downwards most of the time and it is facing downwards most of the time. I am at continuous power, continuous mode. So now I can see this attachment. Now this is a little tricky. I am going to take out this part but there will be an attachment which I have to mechanically lever upwards which I will show in subsequent time. So I have taken out this. And you can see that. It's not worth trying to take this out now. Just put in some high molecular weight viscoelastic. Use your dialer and trying to get that attachment. I just <coughs> prolapse this little bit of piece out and rotate it. I need to see the attachment there. Just tilt the attachment upwards. Once you get this attachment, things are going to be very easy. Don't catch the pupil. No, that's it. Once that is done, everything will just come in like butter. That's it. It's over. Come out. And it is only at this point in time that I am going to inject adrenaline into the anti-HM. I will not do it for the phaco part. So if you try to inject adrenaline twice, it never works. Invariably doesn't work the second time. So I have injected it now mainly for cortical aspiration. And try to release the cortex all around or the epinucleus all around and bring it to the center. Try not to take bits and pieces. It becomes very difficult if you form a bowl. So I just take that, release it, go to the other place, catch something, bring it to the center. I'm trying to get rid of it and trying to get another piece here so that it comes out. Yes, there. Just flip it across. Once you get this, just moving this out of the way till I go for the other piece, the other area. Yeah. bring out that, bring out that plate. It's just that nucleus, smaller pieces are easier to handle, epinucleus, a bigger plate is easier to handle. It's as simple as that. And that's done. I am not going to hydro implant in this case. I am going to do it under viscoelastic. I think it's a little time consuming but safer. And there goes the lens into the uh, bag. I then go ahead and aspirate all the HPMC. There is a little bit of hydration of the wound. I think it's not so bad with such a hard cataract. Make sure you aspirate all the HPMC. I am giving a subconjunctival result as the patient is a diabetic. Thank you so much for your patient watching.